Okay, let's try that again. This is why <laughs> you start early because there's no sound. So where did my book go with my notes? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, I got it sorted. I ironed my shirt, but I forgot to plug in the microphone for the audio, so we should have audio now. <laughs> thanks, Rebecca. So... <laughs> Sam says, hey to everybody. Hi, Monica. Yes, it's working. Thank you so much. Uh, so, just again, start here. Uh, if you got Facebook running in the background or you got any other programs that are running, just turn those off. That way it will help with the live stream to come through more efficiently and those types of things because, uh, believe it or not, there is a lot of data here that's coming through to you. So, uh, as I was saying uh, as well, if you like what you see here, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give it a, uh, a thumbs up. You know, all of that uh, helps out the channel, increases the SEO and gets us found in Google and the search engine here in YouTube, and it helps everybody else who's going for a license. Ty Ty, hey, uh, big money boss. Yes, thank you. We can hear you now. <laughs> it helps when I plug in the microphone. So as I was saying, I am going on holidays as a Wednesday for two weeks. I am going to try and keep all of this going while I'm away in the province of Ontario visiting my mom, my nan. Hemendor, sorry you passed your road test. What? Uh, tell me what happened. What was the, what was the reason that they gave you that you weren't successful in your CDL road test? So, as I was saying, I'm going to Ontario for two weeks. I'm going to try and keep this going. I am going to try and do this live stream Sunday nights. Uh, it will be on my phone. I will be answering comments, all of my comments on the phone. So just <laughs> bear with me if the punctuation is not in place and the capitalization, those types of things. So know that that I'm going to be working on my phone because believe it or not I'm going to Wingham Ontario you know part chicken part pig and for whatever reason <laughs> they don't really have internet there so I'm going to be working on my phone Michael I'm scared to drive and have bad anxiety in real life I can't be around people I'm going for my end what do I do okay Michael look at the video on fear and anxiety uh, in driving and passing a road test that will give you really good information about overcoming that fear and anxiety in terms of driving and if anybody has fear and anxiety in terms of driving or any aspect of your driving make sure you have a look at that video that video has uh, been extremely popular has some really good information in now one of the things that i suggest to students in terms of fear and anxiety and overcoming that is to start small okay get used to the vehicle take it out go to a parking lot get used to the primary controls and do really short lessons okay don't try and uh, take too much uh, little short lessons little short steps and if you just go out for 10 or 15 minutes and drive and then take a break and then maybe do it again sometimes just sitting in the vehicle is going to help as well in terms of overcoming your fear and anxiety and those types of things so ice passed his road test last thursday uh awesome okay amandor ahmed nor sorry i'm trying to pronounce it properly for you uh you panicked yeah sometimes unfortunately that happens in our road tests uh so uh you know it happens you just kind of kind of take it as a learning uh experience regroup get a little bit more practice and then go back and do it again so yeah okay so where is my cursor where did my cursor go I don't have my cursor there's my cursor okay there, look at that, live chat on the window, even better. Okay, so I'm going for holidays for two weeks to Ontario. I'm gonna keep this up, keep trying on this, so um, just bear with me in terms of my phone. Hopefully the live stream will work on my phone. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to consult with you about was uh, the name of this, because I'm gonna do it every Sunday at six o'clock in the evening. Uh, Smart Success Sundays is the current name. You can weigh in on that, and I'm open to all kinds of um, suggestions. I would love to hear your comments about maybe what we should call it in terms of a Sunday night feed. The reason I wanted to do it on Sunday nights was because lots of people are doing the road tests uh, for the upcoming week, and I can give you a hand in terms of any questions or concerns that you may have in terms of your upcoming road test for the week. So um, if you want to leave a comment, by all means, uh, that would be really great and helpful to all of the other people who are going for the road tests. Okay, so Joe, from Indianapolis, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, Joe's a bit frustrated by people driving slow in the in the in the big dollar lane, the fast lane, the acceleration lane, the left lane. So, uh, Joe, yes, we all know that <laughs> that sign which says "unless passing, please stay right." is usually for the people driving in that lane. So yeah, okay, we would like to just emphasize and ask courtesy for other people that if you're not driving the flow of traffic, please stay in the right lane. So ICE gives some comment about staying calm for the people who are doing the road test. Uh, try to remain calm, uh, just breathe, relax, get as much practice as you can because remember when we get under stress for the purposes of a road test, we do what we practice. If it's only been a week that you've been driving a vehicle and you're going in for a road test it's going to be really tough for you to pass that road test because you haven't had enough practice so try to <laughs> get as much practice before your road test get a good night's sleep eat breakfast pause breathe make sure you have all your documentation you've done a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle before you show up for your road test get there early check in go for a little walk breathe practice on your breathing and when the examiner gets out get in the vehicle and remember the first five minutes of your road test is the toughest because you don't know the driving examiner you're not comfortable with the driving examiner you're kind of trying to develop a rapport as long as you can get through that first five minutes it gets a lot easier after the first five minutes so big money boss who just moved to las vegas had a big road trip down there and I believe he moved down there with his family. He's trying to hold back. Uh, truck loads of questions, but it's hard. <laughs> Just fire away, big money boss. <laughs> Joe. Uh, that's okay, Joe. Um, yesterday, and I'm going to put this up on Facebook. I don't think I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel. But I don't know what happened yesterday. But I was driving through two stop signs. And both stop signs, somebody tried to charge through the intersection. And they're honking and yelling at me and all kinds of road rage. So I, um, unfortunately... <laughs> I was upsetting other people yesterday. So I, I hear your frustration, Joe. I definitely under, I hear your, uh, your frustration. Yadver, uh, I'm very bad in parking, but my rest of my driving is good. Please tell me something to improve. Okay, Yadver, I'll leave a link down in the description for you after finish the live feed here, but look for the fundamentals of driving video. That will give you exercises to do in the parking lot. I'm trying to stay over in the shot here so that I'm beside the comments in the live feed. So that's why I keep moving over to the left here. Yadver, uh, you want to go and rent some of those 36 inch tall, one meter tall pylons from your local renter shop, rental shop. You'll need about four of them. They're less than 10 bucks for a day. Go out to the parking lot and straight line along the pylons, reverse along the pylons, forward figure eights, backing around corners. All of that will help you with your parking and your backing up for the purposes of your road test. So have a look at that video. Again, I'll leave after I get this live feed up, I'll leave a, a link down in the description here for you and you can have a look at that and that will help you with that. Uh, Atomics, average test for a class five is between 20 and 45 minutes. I have heard people that it's been shorter than that depending on the examiner, but for the most part, your class five test, the actual physical test of the examiner getting in the vehicle, doing their little mini pre-trip inspection because they're gonna do a pre-trip inspection before they get in the vehicle with you, is going to be 20 to 45 minutes. The time you come back and do feedback and go and check in and those types of things. So that's how long your average road test is. Uh, ice was calm the whole time. Surprised that I passed the first time. I was a little concerned about not passing. No, you you di you did pass. You did what you needed to do, right? And you got the practice, and you took away the examiner's right to fail you. That's all you have to do for the purposes of a road test is take away the examiner's right to fail you. That's all you have to do. So, uh, ice is like he said. His road test was only about 15 minutes. That's a little on the short side. I would say the average is closer to 25 to 30 minutes for most driving examiners. Again, it depends what time of the day. In the morning, it's going to be more to that sort of 25 to 30 minute uh, block. Um, for if you're later in the afternoon, what happens is, is they sort of get behind, and the the road tests as the day goes along tend to shorten up <laughs> over the course of the day. Sam may be able to weigh in on that as well about what his experience is in terms of the length of time for the average uh, road test. Uh, Sam is in New York, for those of you who don't know Sam, Sam is a driving instructor down in New York's and uh, he teaches down there, so he could probably weigh in on that as well. Uh, can you pass a road test if you don't practice for like a month? Amador, it uh, might be a bit tough if you're not, uh, you're, uh, just remind me now, you're taking a tractor trader license 
If you haven't been in a tractor trailer for a month, uh, that might be a bit challenging. I might suggest you might pepper that with a couple of lessons between now and then, or if you can get a hold of a truck to at least get in the truck and go for a drive. Uh, Carlos, Mexico Veracruz. Thank you for your video. You are very welcome, my friend. Very welcome. If there's anything that we can do or you have any suggestions, by all means. Um, okay, so I says his test was in Indiana. It was around 2 p.m. Eastern when I took mine. Yes, so you're getting <laughs> into the early afternoon there, and the road tests get a little bit shorter and shorter and shorter because they get backed up and they got a certain amount of road tests that they have to do in over the course of the day and if they're getting backed up because one in the morning took longer you know because they've had a lot of people who are passing if they get a few people who fail those tend to be shorten up the length of the road test so if they're getting into mid-afternoon and they realize hey, i still, still got six road tests to do your road test might only be 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> so yeah you might have got lucky uh angie i had my learner's permit that expired 10 years ago do you have to take the test to get my permit again mm, you you might have to it probably expired by now yes because i believe it's only 365 days for a per learner's permit so yes just uh you are in bc i gather from this um i think you're in british columbia if you're in british columbia go on the icbc website and have a look but i'm almost positive it's going to be a year in most places uh for the permit okay sam says that eight to do eight to ten minutes in new york city wow that's awesome so is so is that sam is that eight to ten minutes for the actual drive or is that sort of eight to ten minutes from the time like how long would it be from the time that say you check in so you come back and you finish up the paperwork and get your license. What would the duration for that be? Um, yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, 8 to 10 minutes seems a bit short. But anyway, it's a lot of anxiety for 8 to 10 minutes of your life, which so much is hinging on it. Uh, Amanda, I took my test Friday, and thanks to your videos, I feel very confident in my abilities and pass first try. Congratulations, Amanda. That is absolutely awesome. And that was the other thing I was going to do that I... <laughs> Okay, next week I am going to be much more prepared for this Smart Success Sunday live feed and I'm going to have a list of uh, people who were successful and passed their road test in the previous week and we're going to celebrate that because it is an absolutely awesome achievement whether you're going for a passenger vehicle or you're going for a truck or bus. It's just a great achievement to get your license and be successful in that endeavor because it, it's probably one of the hardest things you know not not the hardest things but it's something that you work hard for and like I say in terms of success in our lives we appreciate those things for which we work the hardest and you know there's just there's a lot of things going on in terms of you know passing a road test there's a lot of skills and abilities that you have to learn there's a, a lot of knowledge that you have to learn you have to learn physical skills in order to be able to operate the vehicle successfully and there's a lot of um, abilities that you have to know in terms of uh, you know road rules and skills and you know driving is a bit of an art as well in terms of uh, implementing all that stuff so okay so Sam said the actual drive is eight to ten minutes so it's gonna obviously it's gonna be probably closer to half an hour every time that you check in go out to the vehicle wait for the examiner to show up go for your drive get your feedback and then go back in at the end of the examination and do um, the final paperwork and actually to be issued your license okay big money moss i still have trouble with curves i wanted to know how do i stay centered my test was short also okay so big money boss uh just remind me big money boss you did take your test in colorado right yeah i think that you yeah you did you got your license in colorado so just affirm that for me uh ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> which list is that ice that you're on okay amanda so Amanda was the same. It was about 10 minutes in New Jersey for uh, for me. She had a parallel park um, and drive for about five minutes. Very easy. So it seems to be in the States um, that they're, the actual drive is quite short. It's only about eight to 10 minutes. So um, Sam might be able to actually talk to this a little bit. Are they, do you think that the DMVs on the Eastern seaboard are getting backed up a little bit? Is this why the, sh the tests are so short? Is, is that they're trying to do more tests over the course of the day? Is that why they're getting shorter? Because my experience here in Canada, at least on the West Coast, because I haven't been back East for a while, uh, road tests here tend to be 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So I don't know. Um, you probably speak to that more. 
big money boss i'm <laughs> i'm working on the highway video for you to stay in the curves and i will give you the information in the interim watch nascar <laughs> they'll show you how to go around corners and how to make the corner longer but otherwise i'll give you an explanation for that and show you how to do curves so i'll get that video done for you actually that's a good video uh for me to do when i when i'm in ontario and i'll i'll get that video done for you uh matthew tips for right take turns i take turns too slow or too wide my test is in five days and i'm so scared i've been stressing over this for months okay matthew slow to 10 to 12 miles per hour before you get to the corner uh for the right hand turn look in the direction where you want to go when you're going around the corner uh sometimes you need you need to look farther down the road where you want the vehicle to go because the vehicle will go where you're looking so you have to look in the direction you want the vehicle to go and the vehicle will go there when you're about halfway through the turn that's when you accelerate out of the turn and allow the steering wheel to come back now depending on your local dmv some driving instructors are going to want you to manipulate the steering wheel back other ones are you can simply open your fingers keep the wheel the steering wheel in contact with your palms and then allow the wheel to spin through your hands and then just do the slight correction that you need to do to do the right hand turn now there are some videos here on the channel uh making right hand turn and again i'll leave that down in the description for you after the live feed on how to do your right hand turn so have a look at that video as well as well i would suggest that you also look at the uh, fundamentals of driving video to get more familiar with the primary controls and get those 36 inch meet, uh, 36 inch tall pylons you can get them from your local rental shop for about 10 bucks you need about four of them and go out and do forward and reverse figure eights in the parking lot and that will help you controlling the steering wheel and the throttle and the brake, the primary controls of the vehicle for the purposes of your road test, okay? Uh, okay. Okay, so Sam says it has been uh, eight to 10 minutes. Cami failed road uh, right turns, that's unfortunate, sorry to hear that. Okay, uh, you are most welcome, Matthew. What else we got here? Cami failed my road test. What was the reason you failed your road test, Cami? Uh, just let me know here. Maybe I can make some comments on that. Okay. Uh, Amond uh, Nor, uh, yes, you can keep trying the road test, but you know you want to. Unfortunately, it's a bit hard on your self-confidence if you just keep taking road test after road test. There is no limitation to how many road tests you can take, but you do eventually you know, want to get your training in place. And I would strongly encourage you to work with a driving instructor and get a mock road test done. That way uh, you can get some feedback about your whether you're prepared to take a road test and as well. Uh, if you're having difficulty with your nerves and those types of things, try and get yourself an honorary driving instructor that's going to kind of put you through the paces. Um, I'm kind of like that once I get near a road test, three or four lessons out from a road test, I am going to kind of push the student and see whether they can deal with stress uh, and how they respond to that stress. Because unfortunately, if driving examiners or driving instructors are just nice to you until up to road test day, they're really not doing you any favors because you're gonna be under a great deal of stress on your road test day, and you you want your driving examiner to kinda of have that lesson in place that they're gonna see whether they can push you a little bit and see if they can trip you up because you need to know how to deal with that stress for the purposes of your road test. So see that as well and see if you can get that in place. Uh, okay, how do I know if the steering wheel is straight? If it's not, how do I decide which way to steer to bring it straight? Okay, no brim. The steering wheels on passenger vehicles turn one and a half to two turns in each direction. Most passenger vehicles, the steering wheel goes one and a half uh, turns complete left, one and a half turns right. So you have to keep track of the steering wheel and the little logo if the steering wheel hasn't been removed, which it hasn't on most uh, vehicles. Turn the steering wheel one and a half turns, bring it back one and a half turns until the logo is straight and, it will, and your steer tires will be straight. So you have to keep track of where the steering wheel is as well. If you're not quite sure if 
your steer tires are straight, just inch forward a couple of inches and you will know immediately whether you're one revolution out on getting your steer tires straight. So one of the, the, the key skill that you need in order to control the steering wheel is to know that it moves one and a half revolutions in each direction. So that's how you keep track of the steering wheel. <laughs> My driving instructor was really nice. Well, you know, we like to be nice for the most part, but uh, you know, as driving instructors, as teachers, good teachers, good driving instructors, their job is twofold. One is to take you outside of your comfort zone because nothing happens, there's no learning inside your comfort zone, right? We're always uncomfortable when we're learning something, especially driving. And the other thing about driving instructors and teachers is that the other part of the other twofold of that is that they're there if something goes wrong. They're there as a safety net to help you out and pull you out of an emergency situation if you get into something that you can't handle. So if it, for example, you're on a left turn in the, at night and you can't see where to turn around the corner, that's what driving instructors are there. So the first thing is they take you outside of your comfort zone, so they push you a little bit because there's no learning inside your comfort zone. And the second thing is, is that good driving instructors, good trainers and teachers act as safety nets if you get into a situation you can't handle. They intervene and help you out and smooth over that transition. Catherine. Okay, Catherine, little things, there are not little things that they're looking for. They're looking for the big things overall. Do you have good control of the vehicle? What you need to prove to the examiner, what you need to demonstrate to the examiner, rather not prove, you need to demonstrate to the examiner is, is that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic situations. Essentially, in any traffic situation, you need to have four basic components of the road test in place. You need to have speed management, space management, observation, communication, and those are the four basic uh, components of any road test regardless of class. So speed management, for, if you're taking a passenger vehicle license, you have to do the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. The second one is space management. You can't get near anything or near other road users. You have to have good space management and a buffer of space around your vehicle in terms of defensive driving. Observation, you have to have scanning patterns in place. You have to shoulder check twice for every turn and you have to shoulder check twice every time you move the vehicle laterally, lane changes, emerges, and those types of things. And then finally, you have to communicate with other road users, uh, the position of your vehicle on the roadway, uh, lights, signals, your horn, uh, eye contact, and appropriate hand gestures. Don't tell anybody they're number one on a road test because <laughs> you won't be successful. So those are the four basic components and the fundamentals of any road test. You have to demonstrate due care and control of the vehicle to be successful on a road test. And then finally, all you have to do is take away the examiner's right to fail you. That's all you have to do on a road test. Okay, Monique, uh, when turning on a left turning curve, do I drive a little right or and then turn so I don't hit the curb? Uh, Monique, left turning curve. Whatever way you're turning in a curve, you always want to stay to the top side of the curve. So if you're going around a left hand curve, you want to stay to the right. If you're going around a right hand curve, you want to stay to the left. So you always want to stay to the top side of the curve because that's the longest line through the curve. And not so much with passenger vehicles, but bigger vehicles, pickup trucks, trucks and trailers, buses, and those types of things, you're always going to have a certain amount of off tracking, which means that the rear tires take a shorter path than the steer tires. So therefore you're going to have to take the longest path through the curve. So if you're on a right turn, you're going to stay to the left. If you're on a left curve, you're going to stay to the right. So top side all the time. Okay, uh, Joe, I've been driving for over 30 years and just you just taught me something. Didn't know about the steering wheel, one and a half turns. <laughs> yes, it is, Joe. It's one and a half turns. Some of the other vehicles, I have been in commercial vehicles, trucks and those types of things, it's two turns. It can be up to two turns. But just get your own vehicle and just turn the steering wheel and then you can figure out uh, how far it is. But on most passenger vehicles, it's one and a half turns in either direction. So glad, glad we got something for Joe there. Uh, that's great. And, you know, he got to have his little you know rant about his frustration about slow people driving in the left lane which you know frustrates me too especially on the pat bay highway the patricia bay highway on vancouver island it just <laughs> people insist on driving in the left lane there okay matthew i have one more question it does not have to do with my driving but more with dmv side i kept my permit in my wallet yes i know bad idea and i washed my wallet on <laughs> 
Matthew, you have to go to the DMV and get yourself uh, a reissued a permit. That's that's what you got to do, unfortunately, which is kind of a pain because it's to deal with bureaucracy. So that's what you got to do. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you might be able to do it online, Matthew. Have a look online and see if you can do it online. That's also a possibility. And <laughs> Joe just asked for all people who are driving less than the traffic flow in the left lane to move to the right. Or if you're on the other side of the road in the UK and Malaysia and Australia and places like that, then move over to the left. Please and thank you. <laughs> uh, Nobrium, are the, s the rules the same in the US and Canada? Okay, most of the driving rules, Nobrium, are more or less the same. And th that's an excellent question because one of the points that I always say to people, to the smart drivers here on the channel, is seven to 10 days before your road test, go and do a mock road test with a local driving instructor at a local driving school because they will be able to give you the specific nuanced information that you need in order to pass the road test. And I'll give you a couple of examples about that. The first example is, is that one of the things that I teach for the purposes of a road test is that when you, when you make a turn with the vehicle, after you complete the turn, simply open your fingers, keep your palms in contact with the steering wheel and let the steering wheel slide back through your, your palms. Okay, and that's the way that I teach it because the steering wheel will come back on its own. However, there are certain places, and this tends to be somewhat localized, and it tends to be the personal opinion of the driving instructor, the driving examiner, that you have to physically manipulate the steering wheel back. Well, unfortunately, my opinion, my personal opinion, my professional opinion, is that these people have not graduated from the 1940s and 50s when power steering came in. Because <laughs> you don't have to physically manipulate the steering wheel back. So that's one of the little things. The other thing is, is the what I teach on left-hand turns and at complex intersections is, is to put the front steer tires of the vehicle on the front crosswalk line. That way you're committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection. And the reason that I teach that is because 40% of traffic crashes, more than 40% of traffic crashes occur at intersections. It is a, and therefore a left-hand turn, and because a left-hand turn is a high-risk maneuver, you're not in the intersection, and if something goes awry, you're not gonna be there to, be, to get into trouble. The other school of thinking on left-hand turns is you wanna be right out in the intersection because you wanna try and get as many vehicles through the intersection on the left-hand turn as possible. For new drivers, I don't agree with that. I, I want you to stay out of the intersection. It's a defensive move, and it keeps you safe, but, when you go to your local DMV, they might want you right out into the intersection and, and local driving schools, local driving instructors will be able to give you that specific information. So I always say seven to 10 days before you go and do your road test, take a mock road test with a local driving school and they will be able to give you the specific information for your local DMV. Okay, so that's what I say. Uh, Amanda, uh, why do I think that new drivers are a little bit arrogant? <laughs> Yeah, I don't really understand. Well, personally, uh, part of it is kind of hyper masculinity, uh, you know, feeling our oats and those types of things. And we're not in touch with our morality at all in terms of the fact that we could potentially die in a car crash. Um, other people as well, um, you just like to go fast, uh, you know, so they get into trouble. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, that's going to happen with some people. So, you're not in terms of driving Amanda you're just not going to get away with that and the best thing that you can do is have yourself into into a position where uh, you're driving defensively you've got lots of space around your vehicle and you're simply if they're cutting you off or those types of things just let them go and have their crash somewhere else like I said I had kind of an odd moment last night where I went through two intersections people are honking and yell at me yelling at me well you know you try not to react because we do all of a sudden it just kind of pops up but you want to stay calm you want to let them go and have their crash somewhere else. Okay, Benson, what is the best way to turn the steering wheel? The best way to turn the steering wheel, in my opinion, my professional opinion, is hand over hand. There are areas in the world that require you to do push-pull. There's two videos here on uh, controlling the steering wheel, so have a look at those. Uh, so that's the best way, hand over hand, okay, to control the steering wheel. Uh, I'm a chicken. I'm not a chicken, that's the username. <laughs> I'm a chicken. Do you have any tips on controlling speed and braking smoothly? Yes, I do. Look at the video on fundamentals of driving. Go and rent some of those one meter tall, 36 inch pylons. Go to a parking lot, do 
straight line backing along the pylons uh, back ar around the corner with the pylon set them up so you can do forward and reverse figure eights slow speed maneuvers although not sexy in any stretch of the imagination will improve your overall driving and help you to brake and throttle up more smoothly and more efficiently so do spend the time in the parking lot and do those slow, slow speed maneuvers that'll help you out uh, Catherine, the vehicle that I'm using for my road test has a really high rear end and so the back window is narrow and I'm worried that I may not be able to view the cones when looking out the back. That, again, Catherine, that's just going to be practice. What I suggest again is go and get some of those pylons, rent some of those pylons from your local rental shop and work in the parking lot. And as well, if you can kind of get into the mirrors using the mirrors a little bit too, that'll help you as well instead of looking just out the back window. So lots of scanning, looking out the back window, check, just have a glimpse in your mirrors as well, and that'll help you out. Noons is from Richmond. Uh, pastor test on the 2nd of August. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for your compliments, and congratulations on doing the work and passing your road test there in Richmond. All the best with your newly earned freedom. That's great. Um, and hopefully uh, noon there in Richmond, um, I don't know if you're getting as much smoke as we are here in the Okanagan Valley, um, you can go for a, a road trip and get out of the smoke. I'm very much looking forward to getting out of, <laughs> out of the smoke. No Brium, uh, when is it okay to honk? It's no, no Brium. This is a this is kind of a tough one about when it's okay to smoke or uh, when it's okay to honk the horn. When it's okay to smoke? We don't want to smoke because it's bad for your health. So don't smoke. When is it okay to honk the horn? If you have children in the area or they're on the roadway or you're near a park or something like that or you just need to kind of alert them, that's the only time that I would suggest that you kind of give it a little beep beep or you know, the, you're know you sitting at the intersection and the vehicle in front of you is obviously texting or on their phone or something and they're not going at the green light, then you can give it a little beep, right? And just let them know, hey, you need to get going here. But other than that, I wouldn't suggest that it's, it's any time is good to honk because unfortunately, I don't know what it is about horns in cars, as soon as you honk it's instantly aggressive so i would recommend that if you don't have to honk don't honk okay um my driving examiner our driving instructor who taught me how to be a driving instructor did advocate honking you know beeping the horn beep beep but i just it's never really worked for me and especially if you get into some sort of uh, emergency situation where other people are doing stuff that's crazy and and you're you know people are honking and whatnot I always say if you've got time to honk the horn and find the horn, because I've got one of those older vehicles where it's just a button on either side of the steering wheel, um, you usually have time to react and do something evasive, like move the steering wheel or whatnot. So, you know, generally I ask not to get that. <laughs> when, <laughs> big money boss is going out to Wendy's to eat. Bring me back a burger too. I would love a burger. So anyway. Okay, any tips, uh, Blue Duck, any good tips on lane changing? Yes, lane changing. Blue Duck, so lane changing, you need three flashes minimum on the signal before you start to move over and do a lane change. And the reason that I say three flashes on the signal is because the first one is to get their attention, the second one is for them to locate you, and the third signal is to do some is to get them to do some sort of evasive action that they can either slow down and help you create a gap that you can move into. So you need three flashes on the signal before you start moving over. So it's mirror signal, shoulder check, have a look, find your gap. And then before you start moving over, just at the end of your third signal flash, then shoulder check again and then start moving over. As you move over on your lane change, you need to speed up slightly because you're going on a diagonal and you've got more distance to cover because you're going on a diagonal. And therefore to maintain a constant speed, you have to speed up ever so slightly as you're changing lanes. Finally, keep your signal on until you're completely in the other lane before canceling the other si your signal. And when you get completely in the lane, cancel your signal, look up in the direction you want to go and accelerate to the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. So that's how you change lanes. All right. Yeah, excessive honking in New York City. There you go. I'm a chicken. Okay, uh, I'm a chicken is learning to drive manual car. That's interesting, chickens driving cars. 
I'm a chicken. Do you have to be able to drive manual? Where are you going? Are you co you're coming to North America? Just remind me that you're coming to North America because 85% of the vehicles in North America are automatic and it's not likely you're going to have to drive a manual. If you're going to Europe, it's the reverse. 85% of the vehicles in Europe are standard transmission, so you will have to learn to drive manual. Awesome Zane, my car has a digital speedometer and it shows the exact speed that I'm going. What if I go like three or four kilometers over the limit? Okay, for the purposes of a road test, Awesome Zane, you don't have to keep it spot on 30 miles an hour or 50 kilometers an hour. There is some tolerance, but if you're up, say, five kilometers or five miles an hour more over the speed limit, make sure you get it back down right quickly. There is a certain amount of time that you're allowed to go over the speed limit or under the speed limit, but try to keep it at that speed limit for the most part. Look at the video here on speed control. That will show you your, your scanning pattern that you have to implement that will get you looking every uh, 10 to 20 seconds at the control panel. That will help you with your speed control. So have a look at that, and that will help you out. Uh, I'm a chicken going to India. Yes, I would definitely say that you would learn how to drive manual. Now, the other thing that I would say going to India is I had a comment from uh, an Indian woman the other day who said to me that you probably don't want to drive if you're in India. She said that it's very affordable to hire chauffeured vehicles and that probably it's better to, um, to hire a car to drive you around as opposed to learn how to drive because um, it isn't anything like it is in North America. So you might want to investigate that a little bit more. That's some of the information that I know about going to India. But I mean, on the other hand, you know, if you've got that kind of adrenaline thing going on, then, uh, you know, driving in... Um, <laughs> driving in India might be you know really great for that sort of adrenaline boost uh, there you go so yes I would recommend if you're going to India to learn how to drive manual and there is a playlist here on the channel about uh, driving a manual transmission and getting you started right from the very beginning with clutch control Catherine wanted to thank me you are you are most welcome Excellent. Well, Catherine, I wish you all the luck. And if you have any more questions at all, by all means, leave me a comment. I try and get to my comments every day and get people going here. And it's it just is really great that I can help so many people out. Okay, Mummy22, 22, number two, and then spelled out in two. That's great. Uh, what is the quickest way to fail a road test? Uh, not practice, not be prepared, and commit a dangerous action. Those are automatic fails. You drive over the curb, that's an automatic fail. Uh, what I suggest to you is to try and focus on uh, the components that you need in place to pass the road test. So you need to sh demonstrate due care and control of the vehicle, as I mentioned earlier, and the four components of any road test. And just have a look at the eight tips on passing a road test, and that will explain more, in or give you more detail, rather, about speed management, space management, observation and communication. Those are the four fundamental components of any road test, regardless of class of license, regardless of where the road test is in the world. So those are your four components that you need uh, to pass a road test. Um, so I know that, you know, forearm, forewarned is, is forearmed in terms of uh, failing a road test. But, um, you know, if you make one or two mistakes, the road test doesn't have to be perfect. You are allowed a certain number of mistakes and you are going to make mistakes because you're nervous. You're not, you don't have a great deal of experience. Like you don't have five or 10 years of experience like I do in terms of driving a vehicle or someone else. So try and get as much practice as you can. Uh, just know that you have to obey the road rules. You have to stay away from other vehicles. You have to maintain the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. Um, and just try not to commit a dangerous action. And unfortunately, I had a, uh, one of my smart drivers of the day, he failed, a, he failed a road test because he went out to a, an intersection and unfortunately went at a stop sign when the way wasn't clear. And unfortunately, that's a dangerous action. And he was unsuccessful on his road test. But, you know, the nerves get the best of us sometimes on these road tests and we make mistakes. It was like last night, it was, again, I come back to that when I sort of went through two intersections and had people honking at me. You know, unfortunately, I was thinking about something else and I was a bit distracted. And, uh, you know, we make mistakes. Uh, driving is one of those things that requires so much attention to detail. And if you, you get one moment of inattention on one given day with traffic being so dynamic, it's, it's, it's not going to matter. And on another day, it's just going to go crazy and people are going to honk at you. And hopefully, you know, it's just a near miss and a bit of cussing and hon horn honking and, you know, nobody gets hurt or injured or killed in the worst case scenario. So, um, yeah, think about it that way. 
Okay, Jack. Uh, Harshill. <laughs> Thank you, Harshill. That's really great. Uh, yes, I appreciate your comment. So, uh, looks like we're almost near the end here. So, yeah, we'll we'll keep it there. If anybody doesn't, if anybody has any more questions, by all means, leave me a question. I'm more than happy to help you out. Answer your comments, ask, answer your questions, get prepared for the road test this coming week. Again, if you have any suggestions about the name of the weekly feed that I'm going to now have on Sunday nights to help people prepare for the road test, leave a comment down in the comment section there. Um, if there's a better time that works for you in terms of when this live feed could be to help you out with your weekly road test, then by all means, leave a comment as well. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, all of that helps in terms of the search engine optimization, leaving a comment. Um, subscribing to the channel again all of that helps out and it promotes the channel and it allows other people to find the information so that they can be successful on a road test so Joe uh, if you stop at a stop sign are you allowed to move up over the line if you can't see traffic yes Joe so there's three stopping positions three three there now you can see me three stopping positions at a stop sign intersection uh, at the stop line before the crosswalk uh, before the sidewalk if there isn't a crosswalk line and then where the two roads meet those are the three stopping positions so if you stop at the correct stopping position at the stop signed intersection and you cannot see the cross traffic at the intersection move up until you can see treat it as a yield and then proceed so that's the way you deal with the stop signed intersections uh, blue duck yes you are most welcome uh, thanks for the compliment and yes so we'll just wrap it up there nobody else has any more questions i'll just hang around on uh the comments here for a few minutes if anybody else has any questions by all means uh leave me a question i'll be more than happy to help you out and uh yeah we'll just leave it there good luck on your license and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer have a great night bye now